Hi everyone, uh, thank you for clicking on this video, and we are in the worship center once again. I have Priya with me, and Hi. Nate, and Logan, and we're just going to lead you guys in a few songs. So uh, with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you, and we thank you so much uh, for being in our midst, um, for always being with us. Um, God, may we continue to press in, to lean in on you uh, more and more each and every day. Um, God, we thank you for the things that, that you're doing behind the scenes in people's lives. Uh, the things I'm hearing about, um, our churches, um, our staff is hearing of. God, lots of wonderful, great things that you are doing in our midst. Um, God, we just, at this time, just want to sing to you, to sing to your heart, and uh, just offer up a sacrifice of praise to you. Um, so, Lord, be with us, I pray. Amen. Darkness. 
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his grace He is with you.
so I will not be But this question of fear, we're all afraid of it. And there are things in relationship to this fear that you and I have to recognize. That if you trust in God and let Him be your guide and strength, you won't have that fear. And your fear is in relationship to your trust. As your faith in God gets stronger, your fear dissipates. And as your faith in God gets weaker, your fear arises. You want to have fear dissipated and removed? Then you rise up and hold up the name of the living God and look to Him to undertake for you, and He will. It's our faith that brings victory. It's our faith that casts out fear and enables us to put our trust in the blessed Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will worship the man of Galilee who went to a cross 2,000 years ago and no one can take his place. No one will intercede or interfere. We will not permit it. So it is we have faith without fear. Hello, Grace Bible Church. Thank you once again for joining me as we uh, dig into God's Word together. I know that... Uh, what we're going through right now, the current crisis that we find ourselves in, uh, these are challenging times. And, and we, last week, looked at what can we do uh, so that our faith can overcome any fear that we might have as we go through this experience. And, you know, last week we looked at the fact that God is enough. And then that's where it starts. That as long as you and I can remember that God truly is enough, then our faith begins to overcome our fear. But that's only part of what we need to be doing. There are also some things that God wants to develop inside of us while we go through times of stress or trouble or calamity. I was reading something this past week uh, that told me that it takes 66 days to develop a new habit. Well, if you're watching this on Saturday, we are in day 33 of our stay-at-home orders. If you're watching it on Sunday, it's day 34, which means that we are halfway through 66 days. We are at the halfway point of developing new habits in our life. And when our world was disrupted, we all found new routines, we all discovered new schedules, and we all started picking up some new habits. Now, the good news is that if you picked up a good habit during your stay-at-home orders, you're halfway there to making that good habit permanent in your life. The bad news is that if you and I have picked up a bad habit during stay-at-home orders, we are also halfway there to making that permanent in our lives. What is it exactly that God would want us to be developing in our lives while we go through trouble? What habits does He have in mind for us 
so that when this is over with, literally we are different than what we were when it started because he has developed something new inside of us. That's what I want us to think about as we spend time together today in God's Word. What is it that God wants us to do when we're going through trouble? And there's a passage that I want us to look at out of 2 Corinthians. It's chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. I want us to unpack these two verses together. And as we look at this, I think we're going to find that there are three habits God would like to develop in our life during this time so that our faith can overcome our fear. And so we're going to go back and and we're going to unpack these two verses and break them apart and just look at them briefly. But I want us to keep in mind and look for the three things, the three things that we can do when going through trouble. So let's look at the first part of the verse again. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. I think we find here the first thing that God would like us to do when we're going through trouble, and that is we should praise God. That's how it starts. Praise be to the God. Praise be to the God and Father of compassion and comfort. We should be praising God. I know that's kind of hard to do when we're going through a difficult time. And sometimes we think praise means that, uh, that we have to sing a song or hear a song that puts goosebumps on us. And that's not always what it means to praise God. In fact, uh, we can praise God without singing at all. That's possible. Uh, you know, if you're a sports fan, a lot of times uh, we can praise our teams without ever singing the fight song. We just, we just talk about our team. We talk about what they're going to do. I, I think of my boys sometimes when football season is ramping up and they're, and they're talking about uh, the University of Alabama and they're talking about that team and the players and the coaches and, and Alabama hasn't even played a game yet, but they're already talking about what they're going to do, how good they're going to be, how they're going to, to win these games and beat their opponents. They are pouring out praise on a team that hasn't even played a game yet. You and I need to be that way with God in our praise sometimes. Paul is telling us that even when we're going through trouble, we should praise God. We don't necessarily always praise God for what He's done in the past. That may be part of our praise. But we also need to praise God for what He's going to do. Our confidence in Him. Just as my boys might have confidence in a team that hasn't played yet, surely we can have confidence in a God who was there in the past, here with us in the present, and will be with us in our future. And we begin to speak confidently about what He's going to do as we go through our trouble. I was talking with someone this week who lost their job. And rightly so, they, they were upset. And one of the very first comments, one of the very first phrases they made to me is, as they're expressing their frustration, they stopped and said, but I know God will be faithful. You see, that's praise. That's, that's declaring what God will do in the midst of their trouble. Why? Why would we praise God during our trouble? Paul tells us it is because He is the Father of compassion and the God of comfort. That that phrase, Father of compassion, that word compassion means grace. He is the Father of grace, the originator of grace. It emanates from Him. And that grace means that God gives us what we need even though we don't deserve it. 
that God, God meets us and helps us with the provisions that we need in life, even though we can't earn those, even though we don't deserve those. That's His compassion. But it also says that He is the God of comfort. That word comfort, it doesn't mean sympathy. Sympathy sometimes, uh, it doesn't actually help us. It can weaken us because, because sympathy can give us a, a, a victim mentality. And God doesn't comfort us by making us feel sorry for ourselves. No, God, His comfort, He comes along beside us and He strengthens us and He helps us in the midst of our trouble. It's just like that person who lost their job. When they were saying God is faithful, they were declaring that God is going to come along with them right now. He's not going to give them a, a piece of candy. He's not going to pat them on the head just to make them feel better. No, God is going to comfort them, come along beside them, and strengthen them through this time of struggle. And He will give them the strength to face their trouble, the strength to overcome, the strength to endure, not just distract them from their problem, but to actually help them get through their problem and overcome the challenge that they're facing. This is why we praise God. We praise Him because He is the Father of compassion. He is the God of all comfort. And He's right here to help us. And we need to develop this habit of praising Him in the midst of our trouble. The Bible goes on to tell us in the next phrases that we are to praise be to Praise be to God, <clears throat> praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. The first thing that we're to do is to praise Him. The second habit that we are to develop is that we are learned, we should learn to receive His comfort. Receive His comfort. You see, His comfort is not something that we have to go looking for. It's already available. Uh, you know, as you watch the news right now, we're hearing all kinds of stories about a shortage of things. There's a shortage of masks. There's a shortage of respirators. There's a shortage of hospital beds. There's a shortage of jobs. And I could go on and on. When it comes to God's comfort, when it comes to God's compassion, there is no shortage. It is here. We don't have to go looking for it. We don't have to send out some kind of special order. It's already available. He has a monopoly on compassion and comfort, and there'll never be a shortage. And what you and I need to learn to do is receive His comfort. It's already available. It's already within our reach. And what I really like about this passage is that it says He comforts us in all of our troubles. Isn't that great? There's not some troubles that He leaves out. He, in, in all of our troubles, His comfort is available. It's a mystery why some of the troubles that, that we go through, we'll never understand why uh, we encounter certain hardships in life. We do know that sometimes trouble comes into our life because of our own sin, our own rebellion, our, our own disobedience to, toward God. You know, when I think of that, I, I think of the Old Testament prophet Jonah. Jonah experienced trouble because he disobeyed God. God asked him to do something. He said, God, I'm not going to do it. He began to run away from God. He ended up in a storm. He ended up in the ocean. He ended up in the belly of a well. That's a lot of trouble. But it was all a result of his disobedience. Sometimes we encounter trouble in our life because we're disobedient. But even if we do, God says, my comfort is available. It's right there. Sometimes we encounter trouble because God allows things into our life so that we 
Um, well, so that we'll be better people, so that we will not sin. Think of, think of a, a horse, uh, a, a horse, a wild horse. And then you take that horse and, and, and someone breaks it. They break the horse and they put a bit in its mouth and they put a harness on that horse and they put a saddle on that harness, on that horse. That, that is trouble for the horse. But those instruments of trouble bring out the very best of the horse. It, it allows the horse to its real value to come forth, its real beauty to be displayed. The horse becomes, becomes more valuable, more um, useful because of the trouble that it had to endure. Being broken, learning to wear a bit, learning to, to, to have a saddle on its back. Sometimes in our lives, God, to get the very best out of us, has to let trouble in our life. It's not because we did something wrong. It's because God's trying to get the very best out of us. Sometimes we encounter trouble, and when that happens to you and I, God's comfort is available. It's right there. Sometimes trouble uh, comes into our life for no other reason except that God is trying to develop our character. There, there's no other way for us to become people of integrity, to, be, to have patience, to have perseverance, to, to endure without going through trouble. In fact, the Bible tells us that in Romans it says, suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Sometimes the very hope that we need in our life can only be found by going through trouble. And God is right there giving us comfort when that happens to us. But in this passage, Paul gives us another explanation as to why God allows trouble into our lives. What it is that God's trying to develop in us, this new habit that we need to bring. Notice what the verse says. It says that, that it is God who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Sometimes we go through trouble not because of something we've done, but because God is preparing us to do something. That leads us to this third habit, and that is that we are to share the comfort that we receive from God. See, during this time of, of stay-at-home orders, this time of forced isolation, this time of, of forced furloughs and the things that we're going through. God wants us to learn how to praise Him. God wants us to receive His comfort. But God also expects and desires for you and I to share with others the comfort that we've received from Him. And remember this word comfort, it, it doesn't mean that God distracts us from what's going on. It doesn't mean that, that God gives us a shiny new toy to play with so that we don't have to worry about our trouble. God's comfort means that He comes along beside us. He steps into our world with us, and He begins to strengthen us so that we can face our trouble, so that we can overcome our trouble. And as He does that, as He gives us that strength, and as He gives us the creativity and the courage to face our troubles, we are to turn around and give to others what He has given to us. It's almost like we're, we're conduits, like electricity runs through wire. It, it has a source, and it's going to the outlet, but, but the wire in between is nothing more than a conduit that the, that the electricity runs through. You and I are to be those conduits of God's comfort, God's compassion to the people around us as He pours Himself into us. I know sometimes we think that, 
to be able to do this, that, that we need to go through something before we can help someone else. It, it would be like me saying, I need to have cancer before I can share God's comfort with someone who's going through cancer. Now, obviously, God can do that. But, but what you and I need to know is it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to encounter a, a hardship to be able to comfort someone else in their hardship. When uh, Cherry and I were uh, still a, a young married couple, uh, and by the way, Cherry still is young, uh, but when we were much younger, uh, Caleb was born and, and, and Seth was born and, and we were blessed to get pregnant a third time. Unfortunately, that pregnancy ended in a miscarriage. And I remember uh, when that happened, the day that I had to take Cherry to, uh, to, to the facility where they were going to do the medical procedure to the, the DNC um, on that miscarriage child. She went up into the facility off with the doctors and the nurses, and I was left by myself in, in the waiting room. I was sitting there all alone, and I looked up, and in walked a man from the church where I was pastoring at that time. His name was Andy. He was the only person who showed up that day, and I, I didn't really expect anyone to show up, but I was so grateful to see him. And he came in and he sat down beside me. I, I don't really remember what we talked about. I, I do remember that he said a prayer for Cherry and for me. And he sat there with me for several minutes. And finally, he got up and he looked at me and he told me he was praying for us and he left. And as he left, I, I felt different when he left than when he came in. When he came in, I was, I was feeling scared and, and, and alone and sad. When he got up and left, I, I felt different. There was a strength inside of me that wasn't there when, when he wasn't there, you know, when, before he came. I remember going to him a couple of days later. I wanted to thank him for coming and seeing me while Cherry was having that procedure done and for praying for us. And in talking to him, I, I somewhere along the way, I just assumed that that he and his wife had probably gone through a miscarriage. And so I asked him about that, and he looked at me with a funny look on his face, and he said, Carrie, my wife and I have never had a miscarriage. The reason I tell you that story is because I want you to know that God, the comfort that He gives you, He can use in someone else, even if you haven't been through exactly what they're going through. You see, if, if, if it's dependent for you and I to experience every hardship to be able to share God's comfort with someone else, well, then we're all in trouble because none of us have been through a pandemic. There's no one that can walk into our life who can sit down beside us and say, hey, I've been through this. I know how you feel because no one around us has been through what we're going through. But as we go through this trouble, God's comfort is available to us. And you and I need to develop the habit of sharing that comfort with our neighbors, with our family, with our coworkers, with the people around us. God comforts us so that we can turn around and comfort others. These are the habits you and I need to be developing in our life right now. We need to be learning to praise God in the midst of our trouble. We need to be learning how to receive the comfort that is so available to us. And then we need to learn how to share that comfort with those around us. I wanna leave you with a prayer. It says, Father, I praise you because you are the originator of compassion. I praise you because you are the Almighty God who comes along beside me and strengthens me when I am going through trouble. I receive your comfort. Teach me to recognize it so I can praise you even more. 
O oh Lord, don't let me be selfish with your help. Show me how to share the help you provide so I can come alongside and strengthen those in trouble around me. Let all of this bring glory to the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.